Thank you. Exit to your left, quickly. Lead away first. Is that it? No, no, no. Thank you. 
chance to, to say that uh, I believe we've covered our prison. We are almost there. And when I say we, I mean uh, that it all started so with uh, my uh, feeling that you are so interested in making a great contribution towards resolving these problems and securing peace and justice and dignity and uh, a chance for all the people in our area. We do this. So we've tried our very best here to give it a life and, and uh, I believe that we have come a very, very long way so far. We are almost, I wouldn't say at the end, but at, at the beginning. And it all looks extremely uh, promising. But we need your help and the uh, help of our friends in the United States in the phase uh, that is to come. There have been some very uh, important uh, and useful talks in the, in the last few days. Dr. Schultz was kind enough to listen to us and prepare for you. And of course, we had a meeting the first night of arrived. <laughs> Someone gave me this, and I uh, decided the cabinet room was the best place for it. And it, uh, see, it's, it's a decision machine. And uh, when it gets down to everything is fatal, the next grand. <laughs> Yes. We know it's on yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I know that, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Mr. the nation, for your cooperation and joining in, in our military exercises, Bright Stars. I know this marks kind of a first in our relationship and all of the other uh, property things that we've done. And we've been pleased to, as you know, to notify the Congress as we said we would about the arms package. And we're making the maximum effort, but uh, it won't be easy. We're determined to win. And now I know that you're going to see congressional leaders, and that's an excellent idea. And uh, you are the best spokesman for peace. And uh, you can perhaps. Uh, do a good deal to help us in this effort to get the cooperation of Congress with regard to the IMP as we go forward in these. I have just had a very productive meeting with King Hussein of Jordan. Jordan has been moving steadily and courageously forward in the search for a peaceful, negotiated settlement of the conflict in the Middle East. And Jordan has not wavered from this course, despite terrorist attacks against its diplomats and its interests abroad and the threat of worse to come. I told His Majesty in May that he could count on us for the economic and security assistance Jordan would need to address the risks that it is taking. Indeed, over the summer, the Congress improved an important package of economic aid for Jordan. But on Friday, I notified the Congress that I would now be proposing a package of defensive arms. And these arms are important in meeting Jordan's proven defense needs and as evidence that those who seek peace will not be left at the mercy of those who oppose it. But peace, not arms, has been the focus of our discussions with our Jordanian friends. And all of us, Jordan, the United States, and Israel, share the same realistic objective, direct negotiations under appropriate auspices before the end of this year. There are complex and sensitive issues 
which must be resolved before actual negotiations can begin. But I believe these issues can be resolved. Let me repeat that the United States is dedicated to achieving a just and durable peace between Israel and all its Arab neighbors. We'll do all that we can to maintain the momentum already achieved, much of it the result of King Hussein's personal courage and vision. The goal is peace and stability for Jordan, Israel, and all states in the Middle East. The way to that goal is through direct negotiations on the basis of UN Security Council Resolutions 242 and 338. The time to begin is now. I know that His Majesty shares this aim, and I am proud to work with him in this noble endeavor of peace. Your Majesty, once again, you have my thanks and the thanks of all our people. I wish to thank my dear and great friend, President Reagan, for his kind words. I value his friendship and the long-standing relations which happily exist between our two countries and which are based on our joint commitment to the common values and principles of liberty, freedom, equality, and human rights. I have had a very useful meeting with the President. Our discussions were as frank and honest as our friendship dictates. I have reiterated to him Jordan's commitment to a negotiated settlement of the Arab-Israeli conflict within the context of an international conference to implement Security Council Resolution 242. I have repeated to the President what I stated in my address to the United Nations three days ago, namely Jordan's unwavering position in condemnation of terrorism, irrespective of its nature and source. Jordan condemns violence and is committed to a peaceful resolution of the Arab-Israeli conflict. We are prepared to join all parties in pursuing a negotiated settlement in an environment free of belligerent and hostile acts. I have also expressed Jordan's satisfaction with the positive development of our bilateral relations, especially in the economic and military fields. We endeavor to strengthen our ties and hope to continue our close cooperation in all areas. I wish you, Mr. President, continued good health, happiness, and success. And may the Almighty God bless you and grant you strength to lead this bastion of democracy to ever greater heights. Thank you, sir.
Regan wanted to leave the cabinet, sir? Mr. Regan wanted her to leave the cabinet? What do you want?